Hello friends and family, it's Ethnic Green Living here and today I'm here with another um, sit down chit chat video. I'm not in my usual spot by my green babies. I'm at the table because I needed to have a little bit of space. So today's video is going to be another gardening video. Um, when I shared my last video, I had a um, question about uh, when to start and how to repair from um, Miss Tantiana's um, place. And so I wanted to answer that and I already had this video in my queue so I just figured I'd go ahead and make it today. So if you missed my last video, I was talking about um, my gardening goals and um, I did a seed haul from Southern Exposure uh, Seed Exchange which is a local um, community out of Virginia. And then I also talked about my wish list because <laughs> I, I want that Rue apron. Um, and anyway, so, <laughs> so today's video, I am going to be talking to you about um, what to plant, when to plant, and then I'll come back and I'll do where to plant. So for my what to plant, um, I think a very good question is to ask yourself, what is my goal here? Is my goal here to have um, just one or two cucumbers a week to go into my salad, then you would know what you need to plant and you know that you want cucumbers. Um, do Am I an avid juicer? I juice every day, so now I might need, um, you know, three cucumbers per day. And then it's like, okay, well, if I have a family, do we even eat bok choy or pak choy? And if we don't eat those things or Brussels sprouts or asparagus, then I don't even need to plant that. So the first part of it is just kind of like, what are my goals? Is it um, just something here or there, just something to do with my hands? Or is it, you know what? We're going to eat 75% of this garden and um, what we're not eating, we are going to, we're going to eat 75% fresh of this garden and the rest of it we are going to preserve for the fall. We're going to be saving up onions and root vegetables in my root cellar or my DIY cellar. So again, when you know what your goals are and what your whys are, I think that's a really good place to start. Then second, like I said, what do I like to eat? There's no sense in planting things that you don't like to eat, unless you have a lot of space and time and money. If you have that experiment with everything, you might find that there's something that you thought you didn't like, but now that you really like. Um, however, if you're just kind of starting out or short on time or short on money, plant what you know you like. Cucumber, tomato, pepper, things that are going to be uh, more expensive for you to buy in a store. So if you can get potatoes, maybe a dollar for three pounds or something like that, I'm just saying that. Then maybe you don't wanna spend the time for potatoes, but if you know it costs you two or three dollars for an organic pepper, you might wanna grow like three or four of those bad boys. So anyway, and um, what do I want to plant? So for me, my journey was, what are my goals? What do we like to eat? What do I want to plant? And then I bought the seeds. Okay, when to plant. So that's what we're gonna kinda of get into now. Um, Good question. When do you plan it? You know, how do you go about this? So I have a simple way for you to figure all this out. Okay, so first of all, what zone do you live in? Okay, let's take for example, uh, you live in a seven zone. Okay, let's say you live in a seven zone. Okay, what is my last frost date? Well, because I just happened to look up online the 7A zone, your last frost date is approximately uh, May the 1st through the 10th. So anytime between May 1st and May 10th, you probably are safe to go ahead and um, start direct sowing outside. Um, now, if you look outside and you see it's still really, really cold or frosty or something, then obviously you're not going to do that. But if you see it's May 1st and it is like, whew, it's getting um, hot in here, then you go ahead and you plant those bad boys because again, that's just like a little um, window there. And so with the same way that you want to find out what your last frost date is, you also want to find out what your first frost is. And I've done this for you if you live in 7A. Um, and so that is October the 21st through the 31st. So you might get an earlier frost, you might get a later frost, just determining, you know, depending on the year, etc. But nonetheless, if you took May the 1st as your last frost date and you took October 21st as your first frost date and you live in a 7A zone, you would have approximately 173 days to garden. Let me say that one more time. 
you're going to find out what zone you live in, your first frost date, your last frost date. Based upon a zone that I just randomly picked out the blue, I calculated the first date to the last date and there are 173 days. Why is this important? I'm glad you asked me, I'm gonna tell you. Okay, when you grab a pack of seeds, typically, if you look on this um, English lavender, it actually does not say on this particular one. However, if you let me go a little bit further, I will show you this one for the common sage. And if you look closely, right here, it says 75 days, 75 days. Now, some people have a longer growing season. The people that live in the tropics, they live in uh, Florida, they live in, you know, different places like that. They have a longer season, so this is not necessarily applicable to them. And then some people who live further uh, or higher up north have actually a shorter amount of time. So instead of like 173 days, they may have something like um, 100 days. But when you see that it takes 75 days just for this to um, kind of be ready, it gives you an idea already of where you need to be. So let's say you want your harvest in June. So now we're going to, uh, let's say you want your harvest June the 1st. You want to get your first sage. So you're going to take June the 1st and count backwards 75 days. And so that tells you when you need to go ahead and start. Now, some things are um, direct so you sow directly into the ground and then some things you can actually go ahead and transplant from seedlings and some things you just don't know maybe and you can just try both and see what you think works better for you. So uh, with that being said, um, the next question was how to prepare. So how to prepare is being wise, being knowledgeable about the days, about the, um, the dates and about what seeds you have. And so I know there's a lot of people who do a lot of swaps and stuff. And so seed swaps, and I'm actually going to be hosting my own seed swap. Um, so if you don't have seeds, um, stay tuned for that. We can talk about that more in a future video. But uh, the point is, when you look at most of these um, packages, they tell you how many seeds are inside. Approximately, this one says about 230 seeds. Um, for the bigger months, about 200 seeds. Now, something like the zucchini, it's 30 to 40 seeds. So it does matter how many seeds because now if you're going to be making zucchini bread for everybody and their mama, okay, you know, you might realize, you know what, I need two packs of zucchini seeds. Or you may realize, you know what, this butterscotch um, or butter crunch lettuce uh, has 400 seeds. So you know what? I don't actually need uh, two packs of this. I think I can actually get away with just one since I have so many. So looking at the seed pack, it really does give a lot of information as far as um, when to start and how to prepare. This one says 55 days. Um, it tells you how many seeds. And then it goes on to talk about the temperature. It says lettuce may survive uh, 20 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. It tells you how to cultivate it. It tells you when to harvest it and it tells you how to save seeds. But then also if you turn around, it talks about the sowing temperature, um, the sowing depth, the space planting, the row spacing, full or sun. So it really gives you a lot of details on the back of your um, seeds here, if you will, you know, take a look. Oh, that's upside down. Or is it not upside down? Okay, so I won't go through every single packet because these are um, the packets that are original to me and I did, again, do a seed haul already. So I'm going to be going based upon my the seeds that I picked up. Now, I picked all these up last year and you guys know I prefer um, organic seeds and organic food. It's just my preference. Everyone's a little different. Um, I want to share a, something else with you about seeds before I get into... You know what, I'll come back to this. What I want to share is I did a little cheat sheet for myself. And they have these like really cool charts. And I think I'll invest in that next year. 
But this year, I felt like there was enough stuff that I needed and wanted that I didn't need to spend any extra um, money. But they have a really, a really good chart that's amazing. And I think in the chart, you kind of put in your um, frost dates and it tells you your dates. But this is what I did. And it may work for you. It may help you. It may not. Um, what I did was I wrote down um, June crop and July crop. Because once I take some things out, I want to have something else going in so I can just maximize um, the space and the time and the garden season again since I want to eat this and I want to save a little bit away as well. Okay, so what I did was I wrote my June crop um, <clears throat> and then I wrote 90 days out. So I needed to start, if something said 90 days, which I have something here. Here. Okay, so this this um, small sugar pumpkin is a hundred days, and this um, Cherokee purple tomato says eighty five days. Okay, so we'll just use a mix of those. So in order for me to get those uh, around um, June fifteenth, I would need to plant them um, March fifteenth. You see what I'm saying? And so if you had something that was 80 days, like, let's say, for example, these Brandywine tomatoes. No, this says 74 days. But in order to get this in 74 days, if I want to have this on June the 15th, I need it to plant it around um, March the 25th. So for something that was about 70 days, like these California Golden Wonder Sweet Bell Peppers. Um, since they are 70 days, if I want them June 15th, I need to go ahead and be planting them around um, April the 5th. For something that's 60 days, it would be April the 15th, which are these ground cherries. Um, for something that's 50 days, it'll be um, planted around around or about um, April 25th for something that's a 40 day you'd be planting those around May so that's just kind of an idea of when you know how things would work out um, just kind of looking at those numbers no thank you sweetheart thank you so I hope this is helpful um, for you it might sound like a lot but it's really easy it really is and I think if you would just know your um, those frost dates in your zone, I think that you would see it's really easy to count backwards and just figure out when you should start everything. And so for me, the way that I'm kind of grouping my seeds, I do have a lot of my um, herbs together in one spot. But then after that, I kind of have everything grouped together according to when they need to be sown to make sure that those things can be sown first and or can be started inside in like a greenhouse if you wanted something before um, July. You could get gardens, you know, a lot earlier if you started, you know, from the greenhouse or started indoor with maybe grow lights or heat lamps or something like that. So, oh, okay. So I'll come back in another view, video and tell you, talk about where to plant. And I'll also come back and show you how I store my seeds. And I also want to just mention something because your girl's a little special. And so I was not, you know, somebody had gave me some seeds. And I was always excited, like, oh my gosh, right? And then I was like, oh, like they're old. And I thought that <laughs> if they weren't brand new seeds, you couldn't use them. Like they wouldn't grow and they'd be old and stuff. And so um, what I realized is that you don't actually have to get new seeds every year. You can let them grow from year to year. And they do have different ways online of um, telling you, I think it's, you put the seeds in water and the ones that float are the dead ones and the ones that sink are the ones that are valuable. Um, valuable. And so, um, Last year, I did plant some of the older seeds, and honestly, I didn't get um, a crop from a lot of them. So, <laughs> this year, I'm definitely going to be experimenting on me, bring you along on that process, um, because nothing was worse than thinking you have something that's about to grow, baby, and nothing comes up, okay? 
Um, so, but anyway, recently someone gave me some seeds. They're not all organic, but they are untreated and non-GMO. Um, so someone gave me these frosty peas and these were packaged in 2018. Someone gave me some candy corn hybrid and I'm, I need a, I really want a nice, um, corn for popcorn so that we can um, save those kernels and put them in some big jars and my kids can have popcorn throughout the, the year. So I'm definitely looking um, for that. Now you guys know that I do have a, a slight um, thing with liking everything to be uniform so all my seeds have the same packaging. I know, it's, it's just me. So I think what I might do is go ahead for all these other seeds and make a seed cover for them all so that they'll all have the same packaging. Anyway, only me. But here is a yellow squash. This one actually doesn't even tell me when that it was, what year. But it does give me plans and preparation to harvesting tips. Um, this is another Lake Valley seed. So this person, I guess, really like Lake Valley. Or Lake Valley. This one was some broccoli uh, rat. Or rat Read. This is a kabacha squash, it's an heirloom. This was packed in 2018. This is a peaches and cream corn. This is packaged in 2018 as well. Um, I got this one and this one at a um, event, I believe. And um, this one is cabbage, so it's from the Brassa family. And, um, this one was from 2018 as well. And this one is from the University of Maryland and it was packaged in 2019 and this is for an organic gourmet mix. So, got a Spanish Utah onion, which is an heirloom, packaged 2018. And then we have some flowers and I'm so excited about flowers because for the first time I'm really gonna focus on flowers this year as well and so I'll be doing some um, some, you know, I'm doing a potager and a um, cottage garden. So I'll be doing some of this wildflower garden mix. Someone gave me that. Uh, bachelor button, an aster, some cosmos, and I have two packs of marigolds. So um, these are just some of the older seeds that I have. I do have um, a few more that I have the, the traditional. So this year I'm using, um, like I said, the Southern Exposure Seed Exchange, but prior to that, all in the past, this is what I've used. And so I can't show you those because then that would be part of one of my storage solutions. So you'll have to just come back and when you come back, I'll talk about where to plant because probably at that point when I talk about where to plant, I'll actually be showing you where I'm going to be planting all of my items. And um, I'll also come back and I'll talk about how I store my seeds and I'll be talking about the seed exchange. So if you, you know, um, can't afford to buy a bunch of different seeds. Um, you can just join the swap and just pay for the shipping and you can just get a whole bunch of things. So you buy maybe two packs of one thing, but then you get like 20 or 30 or 40 um, different types of seeds. And so I want to encourage you, those who can make raised beds or don't have space for in-ground gardens, um, Dollar Tree has uh, dollar pots and those dollar pots, We'll grow, we'll give you a harvest, we'll give you a nice bunch of um, flowers, organic lettuce, um, it'll give you things like that. You might even be able to plant um, one single um, cabbage in each pot. So my thing is, even if you don't have the money to buy all organic um, or all organic items, um, you still, that doesn't have to be an excuse. Like you can just, even if all you have is a window seal or like I said, um, a front porch, a back porch, you can definitely get those Dollar Tree um, pots and like I said, plant something and save yourself a little bit of money. So uh, remember, you can do a lot with a little and hopefully this video <laughs> wasn't too chatty, but hopefully it was helpful and um, just gave you a little bit more into my gardening journey and what's happening 
uh, here with Ethnic Green Living. All right, guys, until next time, blessings.